going on in Florida. You don't even want us to learn our history. Like, there was a time when enslaved people couldn't learn, and now it's illegal for us to learn about enslaved people. Yeah. That statement that D.L. Hughley just said was profound because it hits at the core of the strategy that's been used since slavery to preserve and propel white supremacy in the United States. It's basically control the narrative and suppress children's access to information that contradicts the propaganda. On September 10, 1894, an organization called the United Daughters of the Confederacy was created. People started to realize that the Civil War had ended 30 years before, so a lot of the soldiers were starting to get old and die out. Their thoughts were, if these people died out without giving the message, their ideology would die. In the beginning, the organization's primary focus was to raise a bunch of money and put up as many Confederate monuments and statues as possible. This is why there are so many Confederate statues and monuments in the United States, because the United Daughters of the Confederacy put most of them up. But after a while, the UDC realized that statues weren't enough. You had to actually teach this ideology to continue it going. So they came up with the Lost Cause. And basically, the Lost Cause is an ideology that says that Confederates were heroes. It says that slavery wasn't bad, that slaves were content with being slaves, and that slavery was not the root cause of the Civil War. In 1919, a woman named Mildred Rutherford came through to push this idea forward. It's important to know that Mildred Rutherford was a member of the United Daughters of the Confederacy. She was also a teacher and she was a prominent white supremacist. And she creates this pamphlet called A Measuring Rod to Test Textbooks and Reference Books in Schools, Colleges, and Libraries. The goal of this pamphlet was to create a guideline that schools could use so that they could have a cohesive message being taught throughout school districts across the South. So in this pamphlet, it said that some books should be completely removed from schools while others needed to be heavily redacted or censored so that the messages of these books corresponded with the teachings and ideologies of the Confederate South. If a book didn't state that states' rights was a primary reasoning for the Civil War, it was taken out of schools. If it said that the Civil War was fought over slavery, it was taken out of schools. If a book referred to Confederates as traitors or rebels, the book was taken out of schools. And if a book stated that the South fought to keep slavery intact, it was taken out of schools. Now these guidelines, this curriculum, was kept intact from the early 1900s all the way up until 1969. And it's believed that 70 million students learned this way. I can tell you it didn't stop in 1969 because I went to school in the South, I graduated in 2002, and I was taught some of these same things. You actually may have been taught some of this stuff too, or at least taught by someone that was taught this, if you've ever heard that the Civil War was fought over states' rights. It wasn't. The ideology came about because of the guidelines that were set forth in this pamphlet. In today's time, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is using these exact same tactics to whitewash the black experience and essentially erase our history. This is why it's so vital that we take it upon ourselves to document and share the injustices that are committed against black and brown people, or any minority for that matter. This is also why it's important for us to have open dialogues and discussions, because if we don't document and communicate, the history is lost. I don't know if you realize this or not, but we are literally living the history that might be hidden from our children in the future. It's important to know that from the beginning of time until there are no more people walking the earth, the winner of the war is the person that held the pen to write about it. It's also important to know that the United Daughters of the Confederacy is still in existence today and undoubtedly has members in it that are making laws that are in positions of power and influence over the minorities that they're hoping to keep the information from. This is how white supremacy is preserved. This is how white supremacy is propelled. And this is the same way that they've been doing it from the beginning of time.